guerrilla activity. Externally conceived, well-organized insurrection, remote area, low-intensity action. In the past few years, this type of warfare has become a greater and greater threat to the effective defense of the free world. One answer is research and development. Research aimed specifically toward the solution of problems unique to this type of warfare. For this reason, on June 15, 1962, the United States Army established the Limited War Laboratory at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, directly under the Chief of Research and Development. War Laboratory is composed of a carefully selected blend of highly qualified officers and civilian scientists and engineers. Military officers are selected from each Army combat arm. As a group, they cover every facet of military operations. The scientists and engineers represent a broad coverage of most of the technical and scientific disciplines. Each man, in addition to being an authority in his own field, has a working knowledge in at least one other technical area. Thus, under one roof, the laboratory has experienced personnel ready to attack almost any problem, and most problems involve more than one phase of science and military tactics. This broad in-house capability makes quick reaction a reality. Requests for projects come from areas of limited war such as Vietnam, the Special Warfare Group in the Combat Development Command, or from the 11th Air Assault Division. In addition, there is increasing interest from other combat development agencies, such as infantry, artillery, and armor. Of course, the laboratory initiates many projects as a part of their continuing mission to improve the effectiveness of military personnel committed to limited warfare actions. New projects are evaluated and then assigned to a branch of the laboratory for development. Then a military civilian team goes to work, each complementing the other. The scientist, who has very close contacts with the interested Army Materiel Command and with private industry working in the particular field, immediately gathers all the existing information pertinent to the project. Then, as the development of the item moves ahead, he depends more and more on the military to ensure that the item will be practical, meet all the Army requirements overcome any peculiar combat limitations, fit in with troop preferences. Prototype fabrication, in many instances, means contracting with private industry. Close cooperation with private industry contributes greatly toward the laboratory's quick response capability. In this case, an existing helicopter launching device is being adopted for use with smoke markers. When the laboratory's design becomes firm, prototypes are built in this plant. Of course, the Limited War Laboratory itself has complete technical facilities, including a drafting and engineering design section, a machine shop, carpentry facilities, and excellent prototype making capabilities. In addition, a primary reason for locating at Aberdeen Proving Ground was to have the use of its excellent test facilities. 75,000 acres of every type of terrain and obstacle that can be thought of, right down to jungle-like areas, rice paddies and inland waterways. Testing under simulated environmental conditions, the quickest, most effective way to prove a new piece of equipment. Once a prototype has been developed and preliminary tests completed, Comprehensive, exhaustive field tests are conducted under actual operating conditions. This troop landing smokescreen system is a good example of the laboratory's usual method of operation. Standard XM3 2.75 inch launcher racks and standard AN M8 smoke grenades combined with laboratory developed adapters result in a new capability. Take existing hardware, modify it, and tailor it to answer a problem. That's one path followed by the Limited War Laboratory. A continuing interest of the munitions branch is the development of counter-ambush weapons. 
One approach involves the mounting of Claymoret mines on the side of a truck. Another area of intensive investigation connected with counter ambush is the detection of hidden enemy troops. The applied physics branch is working on acoustical approaches to the problem. The detection of sound under difficult circumstances, for example, the rustling of bushes or the click of a gun's safety from a distance can save a life. Another device under development is an acoustic detector to tell a helicopter pilot when he is being fired upon from the ground, from what quadrant, and what type of fire. A different approach to detection is carried out by the biological sciences branch of the laboratory. Dogs have been proven valuable in such work and indications are that they could be used in jungle and rugged terrain for ambush detection. This is accomplished by linking dog and handler together electronically in conducting field experiments. Biological sciences teams also work on projects designed to increase the well-being of the combat soldier. For example, a lightweight water filtration device for field use by the individual soldier. Another major achievement has been the development of an effective long-lasting leech repellent. Most jungle type areas, such as Vietnam, are infested with leeches and these creatures, if unchecked, can seriously impair the efficiency of a combat soldier. Projects in the chemical and explosives branch are many and varied, and here too there is a deep involvement in personnel detection. Chemical techniques are being employed to sense the proximity of humans under concealment. Another major area of interest is in personnel identification and the marking of areas such as landing fields, drop points, and trails for day and night operations. The electronics and communications branch works on the vital problems of keeping combat units in contact with one another, particularly in jungle areas or rugged terrain. This ANPRC-64 radio weighs less than 11 pounds and can obtain reliable voice ranges as far as 200 miles, CW ranges to 500 miles when operating to a fixed base station. Final testing is done with troops in the field, many times in actual combat areas such as Vietnam. In this way, any refinements suggested by actual usage can be incorporated in the final equipment. Red Dog to headquarters. Red Dog to headquarters. Come in, please. Other project areas include navigational aids and drop zone locators, such as this portable beacon antenna to assist in the frontline delivery of personnel, equipment, and supplies. In the environmental and survival branch, the emphasis is on the well-being and safety of troops, plus lightening their combat load without compromising effectiveness. For example, Projects provide long-range patrol subsistence kits and lighter survival kits with improved packaging. The food kit, including a main dish and supplementary items, weighs only 10 ounces. Heat a canteen cup of water, pour it in the packet, wait 20 minutes, and you have a thousand calorie meal. Another project involves an air transportable service shelter to protect helicopter maintenance personnel from heat, rain, and insects.
A concept being explored is a canopy platform that can be installed from a helicopter or other aircraft in the top of jungle growth and used for staging of men and supplies. As with all laboratory projects, items that demand special test environments are taken anywhere in the world. Panama, Alaska, the Mojave Desert, or Vietnam. Finally, there's the mobility branch of the Limited War Laboratory. Here are a couple of representative projects. First, the man-propelled load-carrying device. It's designed to increase the load-carrying capabilities of small units operating in areas inaccessible to most ground vehicles, thus helping to answer the problem of how to support tactical and resupply missions over marsh areas, rice paddies, and narrow jungle trails. Testing was conducted by Special Forces troops before the device was turned over to the Test and Evaluation Command for service tests. Although items developed by the Limited War Laboratory are tailored for remote area usage, many also meet all Army requirements. A second mobility project is a device to lower paratroopers to the ground after a tree landing, or to safely lower personnel or cargo to the ground from a helicopter. This is the Limited War Laboratory. Projects are underway in many different areas. And in the short time since June 1962, significant items have been developed, tested, and are being used in combat in Vietnam. Many more items are in final testing. Here is a careful mixture of civilian military talents that embrace all the scientific disciplines and combat arms under one roof to provide quick reaction to the problems of limited warfare in remote areas. The Limited War Laboratory research and development to answer the combat soldiers' needs and answer them fast.